All right, so in this problem, we're told a 110 kilogram horizontal beam is supported at each end. A 320 kilogram piano rests a quarter of the way from one end. What is the vertical force on each of the supports? So the first thing we wanna do is draw what's going on. So we have this horizontal beam here, and this block right here is gonna represent the piano. We know we're gonna have two vertical force on each of the supports. So you can imagine these right here are the supports, right, going downwards, and they're gonna have a vertical force upwards holding it up. We know, uh, and then what we also want to do is label the distances because it's going to be useful when solving this problem. So what I'm going to do is label the whole distance, right, the whole length of this beam L. We know that the center of gravity of the beam is halfway to L, right? It's in the middle, right? The center of gravity is always in the middle of it. And then we also have uh, this piano here, which we know is one fourth of, uh, of the way to the beam, right? So its center of gravity, we know is one fourth of the way across the beam therefore it's one fourth l right so this one's half of l this one's one fourth l is the distance and so we also want to label the forces due to gravity right so the weight force for each of these and we always draw them at their center of gravity so uh, i'm going to call the mass of the beam mb so this force due to gravity would be mbg right it's always at the center of gravity which is uh, in the middle and then we also have the force due to gravity of our piano here, which is at its center of gravity. And so keep in mind, it's actually more in the middle here, uh, but it doesn't actually matter since we're only doing it relative to the X axis. So as long as we draw it on the center here, it's fine. Uh, but yeah, so our four forces here are the two support forces, FA and FB, uh, and then our two forces due to gravity, right? MPG and then MBG. And so now let's talk about how we're gonna solve for this. So what we're trying to find here is FA, right? and FB, these two uh, vertical supports, okay? And the way we're gonna do it is by summing the moment or the torque about a point. So uh, what we're gonna do is sum the moment or the torque, right? So let's sum the torque. And we know in this problem, this thing isn't rotating. It's not moving at all. Therefore, the sum of the torque equals zero, right? Because we know all the forces are gonna cancel uh, and this thing isn't moving, right? Because that's what we're optimizing FA for. We're trying to find FA and FB to support this such that it doesn't move, right? Uh, so yeah, so we know the sum of the torque is going to be equal to zero, right? In order for it not to move. Uh, and when you sum the torque about a moment, what you're a or a point, what you're able to do is eliminate one of the forces. So notice here, we have two forces here, but, um, if I sum the torque about any point, right, let's say here, I would have two unknowns, this unknown and this unknown. But if I sum the torque about a moment that is in line with the force, basically it eliminates from it. Okay. So that's why we're going to sum the moment uh, or sum the torque about this point right here there, which will cancel out this force FA. And you'll, you'll see how that works in a second, but essentially what it's going to do is allow us to solve for FB. And then with FB, uh, it'll be easy to solve for FA. So uh, the first thing you need to know is the formula for torque. So torque is equal to force times distance times the sine of theta, right? So F is just the force. D is the distance relative to the point of rotation or where you're summing it. Right, so in this case, we're summing about this point, so the distances would be from uh, that point. Uh, and then I'll explain theta in a second. So when we sum the torque, or sorry, let's just say zero equals, and then I'm gonna add up the torque. When we add it up though, there's a thing you have to keep in mind. If the force is going to make it rotate in a clockwise direction, we count it as positive. So what I want you to see here is this force right here is gonna make it go this way like this. Right? It's going to rotate like this around this point. Okay, This one is going to make it go clockwise or counterclockwise. Therefore, the torque due to FB would be negative. Okay? And then if you look at these two forces, they're going to make them go like this. Right, The two forces due to gravity are going to make it go clockwise. Therefore, when we sum up the torque there, they will actually be positive. Okay, uh, So if we sum up the torque, we have minus the torque due to FB because it's going counterclockwise. And then these two the torque due to, let's just say the piano, and then the torque due to the beam, we'll say. Uh, we know all of these have to add up to zero, including, or also, I'm going to add the torque due to FA, but you'll see why we don't have to include it in a second, okay? So basically, all the forces on here are going to create a torque, uh, and uh, we know they're going to have to equal zero, right? Because we're trying to find where it's optimized such that it doesn't move. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is individually solve for each of these torques. So I'm going to start with TFB. So as I said before, torque is equal to the force, which in this case is FB. 
multiplied by the distance from the point of rotation, in this case it's L, multiplied by the sine of theta. So let me explain theta now. So theta is the angle between the lever beam and the force. So this right here is the, the lever beam, right? So your lever, that's what we generally call it. And the force is going up like this, right? So you have it like this is the beam, and this is the force. Therefore, the angle between them, they're going to be perpendicular. Therefore, the angle is 90, right? Which means the sine of 90, right? Because that was our angle, is equal to, or the sine of 90 is just 1. So really, we can just ignore it, and we don't actually have to write it down. So notice that all these forces are going to be perpendicular, right? It's relative to their lever, which means that all of them are going to be sine of 90. So we don't actually have to do that here. Uh, but it's just something that's important to understand. Now we're going to do the torque to the piano. Uh, so what is the force? So we know the force is going to be mpg, right? That was the force. And then what is its distance from the point? Well, we know it's one fourth L since they tell us it's sitting one fourth the way. Therefore, the distance is one over four times L. Okay. Uh, next, what we're going to do is find the torque due to the beam. Once again, the force is uh, mbg, force due to gravity. Now, what's the distance in this case? Well, this one's in the center of the gravity of the beam, which is halfway over. We know half of L is just one half L, right? So this would just be one half L. And so now I'll explain why T of FA just cancels out, and you really don't need to include it. So again, the force is FA, right? But what is the distance in this case? Notice that the force is directly on top of the, um, or the point of rotation. Therefore, we know that this, or the distance between it is zero since it's right on top of it, right? If D is zero in this formula, we know the torque is going to be zero. So basically, any force that goes through this point of rotation or where you're summing up the torque, uh, it's really just going to be zero. So that's why we don't have to include it. And notice when we do this equation now, uh, FB is going to be the only unknown, leaving us uh, pretty simple to solve. So uh, just adding them in now, so obviously this is zero. We have minus FBL plus MPG 1 over 4L plus MBG 1 half L. So now what I'm going to do is add FBL to the other side. So we have FBL uh, equals MPG uh, times 1 over 4L plus MBG 1 half L. And so... Uh, yeah, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to divide uh, both sides by L here. So we have the L and the L there. And that's going to cancel out this one half from each side. So what we have, it equals 1 over 4 MPG plus MB, uh, or sorry, plus 1 half MBG. And so notice we know all these variables. We know the mass of each, the beam and the piano. And then uh, G is just the acceleration due to gravity. It's a constant. So 1 over 4 times the mass of the piano we know is 320 times 9.8 plus one half the mass of the beam is 110 I believe yep 110 times 9.8 so let me take out my calculator we have 0.25 times 320 times 9.8 times 0.5 times 110 or sorry plus that's my bad plus 0.5 times 110 times 9.8. Let me make sure I did this right. 0.25 times 320 times 9.8 plus, uh, yeah. So FB in this case is going to be 1,323 newtons. So FB on our thing here, 1,323 newtons. That's going to be your answer uh, for FB. So keep in mind, this is the force on the right here. And then how do we solve for FA? So now that we know FB, it's actually really simple to solve for FA. So since this beam isn't moving, we know all the sum of the, for, or the sum of the forces in the y direction have to be equal to zero. The reason this is, uh, we're assuming this is static, right? Because we're trying to find them such that it doesn't break or move. Um, so we know the sum of the forces in the y should equal zero. So when we add up the forces in the y, right, we have FB. Uh, if it goes upwards, I like to call it positive. So FB is upwards minus MBG minus MPG plus FA. So now we know FB, we know these two, and we can actually just solve for FA now, right? We couldn't do this in the beginning since we didn't know FB. Uh, but yeah, so FA equals 
minus FB, just moving it to the other side, plus MPG, or plus MBG, plus MPG. So it's going to be equal to minus 1323, three, right, since that was um, FB, plus the mass of the beam, which was 110, times 9.8, plus the mass of our piano, which was 3, what was the value? 320 times 9.8. So let's go ahead and do this. So minus 1323 plus 110 times 9.8 plus 320 times 9.8. So you're going to get FA is equal to 2,891 newtons. So that's your FA or the force on the left side there. And uh, yeah, so your force for FB is there. Your force for FA is there. Just a quick summary of what we did. Uh, I knew here uh, that I could sum the torque about one of the uh, right a point that is in line with one of the forces. I just chose FA. You could do FB too, uh, and then that would eliminate it such that I could solve it by summing the torques, because it would only leave that value or that one variable that we need to solve for. In this case, FB, uh, and then we solve for FB, and then since we knew that, we could actually just sum the forces in the Y, knowing they're equal to zero, uh, and then just solve for FA. And uh, yeah, so. Uh, that's going to be your answer for FA. F answer for FB is here. Make sure you know that FB is on the right and FA is on the left. Uh, and they're both going to be pointing upwards, obviously, since they're positive. Uh, but yeah, so these are going to go ahead and be your answer. And uh, hopefully you found this video useful.